Welcome to the exercise science playlist, fitness myth number one, the fitness industry. And so I was going to do a compilation of many exercise science questions answered in one video, including, for example, if you are detrained, muscle doesn't turn into fat. They are separate tissues. But one of the questions I wanted to raise, I've never discussed on this channel before in that specific context. And so I thought what I would do is just stick with that one and go into more depth. What about using different training protocols within the same training cycle if your goal is muscle growth? Can one protocol have a negative impact? impact on the other. And so welcome to Shredder Sport Science, come inside, you can never leave. And so let's set up this topic. The statement that you may hear, you cannot do HIT if you are in a muscle building cycle, because that will stop you from achieving effective muscle growth. Or more specifically phrased as, you cannot use concurrent training if your training goal is hypertrophy. And so why would that have come about? Well, if we think about the idea that change equals adaptation, the idea that if you change your training stimulus, it can bring further benefits in different forms physiologically, that's an advantage, but it also comes with a disadvantage. If you have perhaps concurrent training protocols going on, having different stimulus, one may actually inhibit the impact of another. On this channel, I've talked about before how if you use cold therapy following training, that may help with recovery, but it may inhibit muscle growth potential. So there's the benefit, but the disadvantage also. And so ice baths are not concurrent training, of course, but that is an example of how what we can do in one area can positively impact or negatively impact on another. Now, of course, there will be nuance and discussion and debate to this issue. Absolutely absolutely different views from different people. That's absolutely great. However, what I will state is this idea that you cannot do HIT or you cannot do cardio if you are in a muscle building phase just isn't correct. There's far more to this. And so of course, it's an absolutely valid question to pose that if you are focusing on muscle growth with resistance training, perhaps cardiovascular protocols could inhibit that somewhat. And so here are a few examples. Now, please remember with every example I give, they're just examples. I cannot know your specific situation. So of course, please apply to yourself. This person's goal is muscle growth. They're participating in challenging resistance training but they also want to do HIT training. They also value conditioning and cardiovascular exercise and want to perform HIT with the resistance training. Does your HIT training negatively impact on your muscle growth? And that's what I would like to focus on. And so for HIT and muscle growth, we do have research, for example, into obese populations. However, as that's a very specific population, it kind of deserves a video in itself. So I won't go into that in depth in this video because you have to consider issues such as when you're elevating a heart rate greatly with obese populations, the safety aspect, also the aspect of high impact protocols, for example. And so that's really something for another time. But we're gonna look at these two papers to ignite this discussion and consider advantages and disadvantages. And these papers have longitudinal data, which I can hardly say, which of course is better than short-term acute data, that lazy short-term data. Now I want to be very clear. My video is about resistance training concurrently trained with HIT with the goal of muscle growth, not with endurance training per se, which is another huge topic in itself involving much research, for example, Robert Hicks interference theory. But I wanted to look into anaerobic HIT cardio's impact. Sitkano et al. And so this paper investigated how high intensity interval cycling affects strength and hypertrophy. And so the study involved 22 young men, a simple designation here of a group that did resistance training and a group that did resistance training immediately followed by the HIIT cycling, 11 people in each group. And so it was an eight week study, twice a week training. And so as with all research, I just wanna make it as simple and as digestible for you as possible. So let's get to the results. And so the paper found that the strength increase within the quadricep muscle was similar between both groups. In addition, the muscle fiber cross-sectional area was similar between groups and the increase in different types of muscle fiber type, type one, type two A, type two X, again, similar between groups. And so instantly you can see that the HIT did not negatively impact on the muscle growth and strength growth potential within this piece of research. However, the rate of force development is an interesting issue here. The group who performed the HIT after the resistance training saw a decrease in their rate of force development. And so if you are an athlete watching this and you are trying to perform some kind of power protocol or you're training for a specific sport or event, you may want to consider the fact that HIT training following your resistance training may actually decrease your rate of force development which of course can impact on your results and contribute towards your athletic performance. And of course, when it comes to athletic training and development, the, the ability to apply force quickly is absolutely essential. But following that disadvantage, here's an advantage. The capillary density increased 
when there was HIT following resistance training. Now, capillaries, of course, involved in the exchange of oxygen. And so, of course, that can be beneficial for your aerobic system. And so instantly here we have advantages and disadvantages of performing HIT following resistance training. And so looking at this piece of research, if you're just the regular gym goer looking to build muscle and also maintain conditioning, for example, and heart health, then it seems absolutely fine to perform hit, hit after your resistance training. However, if you are perhaps an athlete, for example, and you have a specific performance goal, you may need to consider the effect of hit following resistance training on your rate of force development. But in terms of the important question of does hit inhibit muscle growth? Well, this study suggests that it doesn't. And let's not forget as part of a holistic approach to health and fitness, training your heart consistently, of course, is a good thing to do. Next piece of research, as if I could say that, I can hardly say adherence. And if you're new to this channel, you won't understand. However, I used to say the word adherence followed by a series of roasting in the comments section, well-deserved. Let's just say talking on camera didn't come naturally to me, never done it before. In case you're wondering, I am self-taught. And so this study again looked at HIT cycling, which of course is a low impact, very effective protocol for performing HIT. But the participation group were 20 female PE students. Group one did power training, Group two did power training followed by the HIIT cycling. This was six weeks, three times per week. And so instantly you'll notice here that the resistance training was a power protocol. Of course, a bit different to the regular hypertrophy type of training perhaps. However, this piece of research is interesting because it does support some data from the first piece of research I presented. So it is useful to include. And so the group that did the HIIT suffered inhibition to their counter movement jump power performance. So both studies I've cited showed a disadvantage of HIIT following resistance training towards your rate of force development. Now, of course, meta-analysis looking into this issue would be better. And when it comes to HIIT training, we have meta-analysis looking at VO2 max. We have meta-analysis more commonly into fat loss, for example. So when it comes to HIIT and muscle growth protocols in a concurrent training program, there absolutely is room for further research, which can help to illuminate this topic in the future. And so we do have a meta-analysis into this area, although it was looking at endurance training with resistance training, not HIT per se, but I still want to present some interesting results to you. Our research suggests that overall power is the major variable, which is affected by concurrent training. Therefore, athletes whose sport requires maximal power or rate of force development should limit concurrently training for strength and endurance. However, if an athlete's sport is primarily dependent on maximal strength and hypertrophy, then concurrent training may not lead to significant decrements, given the proper modality of endurance training is selected. And so the modality, the type of cardio you are doing is absolutely something you have to consider. When separating our analysis into concurrent running versus cycling, we found that strength training concurrently with running but not with cycling resulted in significant decrements in both hypertrophy and strength. And so perhaps aerobic cardio isn't the detrimental factor per se, but the modality where running had a negative impact, but cycling didn't. And they suggest and speculate in part, this is due to running causing more muscle damage than cycling due to the difference in how much concentric and eccentric contraction are used in those disciplines. But of course you have to think about how you're programming that in. The statement that you may hear, you cannot do hit cardio with resistance training in, in a program if your goal is muscle growth. Of course you can to maintain conditioning, to maintain heart health, for example. And as always, your input adds value to the video. So please give me your informational, educational and humorous input. It really helps. Thank you. And so thank you for being here. Thank you for the 300,000 subscriber count. I greatly appreciate it. I never expected this channel to be like this and I, I never take anything for granted. And all I can be on this channel is myself. This dry humor, perhaps sometimes annoying mass of flesh that you have to look at. And so please let me know your thoughts. I'm James Linker, finished.